Get Whoa! That, get what's that up, gay everybody? Face off. Move that back. We gotta get everybody in. When we get Q and A's, though, we're gonna have to bring that right up to your nostrils. Oh, you're kind of scooch you over. We gotta get Mark in here. Yeah, uh, we're, we're gonna don't even fit, bro. The, 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 of... the Q and A's, we're gonna have to. You know, we're gonna have to touch the screen, right? Like to get it going. Like so, we're gonna have yeah. to. Move it in like that. That's all right. We got to start. That should go. Anyway, guys, welcome. This is a new, it's going to be every Tuesday and Thursday, Q&As. Q &As. At 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. Set it in stone. Put it in your calendar. Put in your updates and everything. Here's how the format's going to go just so you all know what to expect. So, how? what's up, For Chad? Sure. Breed Love. He's in our group, man. Breed Check love. it out. Breed Love. What a name. Like, I like the Breed Love. He, I, you know what? <laughs> That's loving. breed love. That's, me, that's all we do in micro fitness. For me, for me, the loving led to a lot of breeding. So much <laughs> that I had to get a vasectomy. Guys, so here's how it's going to go. First, like, one to two minutes, max. We're going to just go over a product update. Today, I'm going to tell you about Swoley and what to expect, when to expect it, because I know a lot of people are asking a lot about that. Second thing, we're going to pick a random topic, a hot topic. And what we want to go over, which is something that you guys might not give a fuck about, is restrictive diets and where we, we see the flaw in things like keto and the vertical diet and all these 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 uh, I'd like to say fad diets even though keto's keto's not really a fad we'll get into that but keto I believe is like a recurring fad it's like herpes it flares up every like two yeah. years it's like a really good case like every two years isn't a bad flare up period I, <laughs> I mean I'll take that <laughs> I, I know Brennan knows exactly about. what I'm talking oh, yeah, about yeah. Talking. your and, head fell off and, personal um, experience and so um. So basically, so that's that. And then we're going to go just open this up to Q and A. And it's going to be awesome because you guys ask exactly what you want to ask. And we will tell you exactly what we think the answer oh, is. Oh, he said keto and Atkins. We're already getting keto questions. Okay, so so here's the deal. Number one, Swoley, I'm going to be honest. Product's been ready for about a month and a half. We had a label issue where one, they messed up on the label. Two, they, the person who was handling our project got fired or quit or whatever, so they lost the project. So basically, we're looking at a 14-week label lead time. Um, again, things you can't predict, things that happen. Um, Swoley should have been out four weeks ago, but we're expecting it next week or the week after. Um, the products may just need to have labels applied. So just realize it will be out. And the video that tells you exactly what the fuck it is, which isn't this video, that will be out as soon as the product's ready to launch, probably the day before. I don't want to do it now because I don't want any of com our competitors to know exactly what's in it because they'll mix it up in their bathtub. And next thing you know, um, there's not Swoley. They'll, 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 they'll put it on their video channel that has five viewers. And they'll <laughs> call it better. Yeah, so, so Swoley's on its way. And that's that. Let's keep this, this is like, obviously aside from the fact that we're swagged out, this is about helping you. This isn't about selling products. So that's as far as we'll go, other than if somebody asks a question about it. So let's talk about restrictive dieting. Now, Brennan is actually, I believe he died yesterday of malnourishment. <laughs> he's been, he's been <laughs> content. I'm trying to give him mouth to mouth yes. to get him back in here. I gave him mouth to mouth just for recreation, yeah. to be honest with well, you. It worked. <laughs> That's the first time I, I'm competed, married. I'm married. I don't mouth kiss. <laughs> oh, yeah. He competed like five days ago and he's competing again. So we don't even know if he, he can actually think. Right? His liver yeah. will fail, your, fail sometime. Yeah, during... probably, it's probably failing right now. <laughs> so, so restrictive dieting. Now, before we get into this, um, I, I think Steve, Steve actually has completely educated me a lot on this in that, you know, a diet is something that you need to fit your life. Now, I don't like looking at diet unless you're Brennan. Who's getting ready for a show competition is completely different than what 99.9 percent .9 right. of you are going to do right. we're looking at a lifestyle so let's say you do keto and you lose 20 pounds that's great the question i ask people i've said this in videos before can you do this diet for two days yeah of course i can do anything for two days can you do this diet for two weeks yeah two weeks two months two years yeah. 20 years so that's the thing right. you want to set a lifestyle yeah does this diet is this something you can run for the next two years? Obviously saying like a diet, is this something I can run until I croak at 80? It's kind of ridiculous, but an eating lifestyle is something you want to run that you should be able to run for a year. And that includes being able to fit in, you know, a little bit of balance, like, you know, going to somebody's birthday or like not asking the question, what do I eat on Thanksgiving? Things like that. <laughs> everything. You eat right, everything, everything on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Brent, Brennan, so what, what's really applicable is you're here and you've have, obviously, you're lean. You make me look fat and I'm known for being lean. So, I mean, what, like you're kind, I know what you've been eating. Right. But can you explain to them, like you're getting ready for a show. Yeah. 
and you're, you're actually, you're more of a bro dieter from what I see your food choices, just walking around. Like you're not eating cocoa puffs at lunch. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't really believe in that. Um, at the same token, I do believe in flexible dieting. Yeah. Um, in a sense where you don't have to just eat broccoli or chicken. I still think you can have carb sources in there that your body digests really well. Um, like I still have, you know, the Ezekiel muffins, the cream of rice. That's my main carb sources. Um, but you do hear a lot of these fad diets where like, oh, you can eat Pop-Tarts. You can eat uh, Cocoa Puffs. You know what I mean? And I, to me... I think that's a joke when it comes to dieting for a show. Mm -hmm. As you said, that's completely different. Mm -hmm. So I think things need to be a little more pinpoint when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. But for the average person who wants to get in shape, I think it's more pinning down your macros and finding foods that make it work into your macros. Yeah, And I think you've obviously seen a lot of people get lean and shredded eating Pop-Tarts and eating. Yeah. You've seen the flexible dieters. They, they are probably some of the leanest people ever see. Now, my thing isn't about weight loss right. for the flexible dieters. My thing's about you have a set amount of restricted calories. Mm -hmm. So you have, let's say, 1,800 calories for a, a normal natural will eat under 2,000 yeah. calories male. Um, yep. If you're going to get anything from your food, you want to get the most micronutrient bang for your buck. Sure. You're going to get more micronutrients out of a sweet potato than you were a pop tart. I yeah. think your weight loss will be around the same. But part of dieting is not getting sick, is staying healthy, well, and I think keeping those micronutrients in are pivotal. You know, you know yeah. part, part of life is longevity and health as well. And, I mean, when you're substituting in, when you have a limited amount of calories per day and you're substituting in just sugar uh, with yeah. no micronutrients, the question is, is it the wisest choice? Is it the best choice? And, you know, I don't think so. You look at effective versus optimal. Uh, yeah. there's, there's many things that are effective. Sure. But when you look at overall optimal picture, I think Joe Daniels from Swing This Kettlebell said it best. He's like, diet's great. You're going to lose weight. But you need to look at why you're dieting. Right. You know, if you're just dieting for fat loss, sure, calories in, calories out. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the overall big picture of the situation, then I truly believe that you, you got to make the, the best choice possible yeah. for the overall outlook of that food. I mean, what's your take on it? Because, I mean, do you believe in people being able to have cereals and Pop-Tarts and stuff like that when they're dieting? Do you, do you believe in that or do you think there is a hormonal response to certain foods. I, I, so. I, don't, I don't believe the hormonal response is going to be anything great enough to be deleterious to the fat loss. Um, right. I, don't, I, don't, I believe that at the end of the day, insulin does matter, but it's calories in versus calories out that okay. trumps all. Yeah. Um, however, you know, if, if you had a choice, now I, some people do well, but my problem with a lot of people, especially when they're dieting, is there's a psychological fact that some people have trigger foods. Um, I was Shit. Bring that up. Richard yeah. Simmons. Remember the dude in the short shorts? Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. really, really gay. Skinny fat and boy. Super fat boy. Yeah. yeah, but but the thing is, he said something profound. I'll never forget this because I, I saw it on like the Today Show or Oprah or some shit like that when I was a kid, homesick from school. Yeah. And he said something like, It's okay to eat one cookie, just don't eat the whole box. And a lot that, of, though. and that's why, and he's like, that's why I tell people don't even touch the cookie. Right. You don't eat one cookie. You can't eat the whole box. So there's a couple things. If you are an addictive person who has binge eating um, predispositions, in my opinion, like, well, there's just, just allow a little bit, be flexible. Right. Not really. If you have a binge personality, that one cookie could lead to many. So it depends on the and, person. And when you say the majority of people have those trigger foods. So if they throw them in, they're going to want to continue and they can't stop. That's hey, why I have a problem with it if it fits your macros yeah. because I think – Psychological. First, psychological yeah. and it's – I don't know. It's, I think it, at the end of the day, it doesn't build the best um, when it comes to uh, like repetition, like yeah. choices. Uh, so that you're setting up bad examples for yourself mm -hmm. and you can't stop. And then you think everything can fit. And then you go way over your expenditures. Yeah. I'm a I'm a recovering binge eater, and um, I know just speaking for myself and dealing with other binge eaters, if you have it in the house, it's all you're gonna think about all day long. Yeah. It's like there's Doritos in the cupboard, there's Doritos in the cupboard, there's Doritos in the cupboard, and sooner or later you inch closer and closer, and before you know it, there's like you're you're picking out the crumbs at the bottom with mm -hmm. all kinds of <laughs> regret and a little right. bit of joy, but mostly regret, you know. Yeah. yeah. But nacho cheese. <laughs> Power. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, tell, it's, I tell people all day, like people come to me because I lost 100 pounds 
And they're like, what's, what's one of the big keys? Like, don't bring the crap in the house. No right. crap in the house, no temptation. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Easy. That's, Easy why mode. We, that's why we don't have babysitters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no temptation. <laughs> we have old dudes. Old dudes. <laughs> yeah. We're like, right. Good luck finding a 16-year-old boy to babysit your right. kids. It's hard. I just think it builds bad habits. And I think when it comes to this lifestyle is you do want to have balance and you do want to have good habits. And when you're throwing in foods like that, especially if you are a binge eater, you're more than likely going to make a bad habit of it. I right. think so. And humans are creatures of habit. Exactly. So if your habit is to eat egg whites at 6 a.m. every day, yeah. there's a good chance you'll eat egg whites at 6 a.m. every day. Humans are good. Habit is what we do. Yeah. Humans are creatures. So we, we were going to talk about restrictive diets. Now, you, you got, we're talking about competition diets and getting lean. But the diets for 99.99% .99 of people who really just need less crap and more whole foods in mm -hmm. their life. That, mm -hmm. You know, these types of people, there's a whole bunch of diets out there that are extremely restrictive. And we're talking about lifestyle diets like getting in keto by limiting this, that, and the other thing, limiting carb sources. We have the uh, Velocity Diet, which we just put up an article at Tiger Fitness, and you better check it out or I'm going to tell your mom. <laughs> All right. And it, it's, it's kind of restrictive, and I tell people it's restrictive. And they're like, no, it's not restrictive, but you know what? You're kind of, it's teaching everybody to eat the same foods. Yeah. Yeah, same, same with like... The vertical diet, the keto diet, I think that what I always end up, and I try these diets because I think it's my duty to try these diets as an industry expert. Yeah. And every time I go back to the fact that, and, and I use this, this analogy, I really like toast with my eggs. Yeah. Like I can't imagine going my entire life without toast for breakfast. Like toast is like my shit. Yeah. I love toast. Yeah. So if it's something you really like and you exclude that from your life, same with the cookie. You know what? Maybe you allow yourself cookies twice a week, but don't keep it in the house. Like what we do with our kids, I'd rather spend more and get them ice cream out then every night, hey, hey, Dad, can we have ice cream from the freezer? Right. It's like, no, we're going on a special family trip Oberwise up the street. We're going to get a pint. Yeah. So I think that anytime you look at diets and restrictive dieting, you need to think to yourself, what then? Like, then what? The then what question, like, what happens if you reach your 20-pound weight loss goal? Do you see yourself eating only right. rice and steak every day, right. like on the vertical diet? Is well, that something you could do? What about, like, when you talk about vertical and keto, what's your strongest fat burner out there. It's not pills. It's not any of the fancy stuff. It's your metabolism. Mm -hmm. and there's gonna, those I think are going to take a toll somewhere down the line by doing your restrictive diets. You need the whole foods. You need your proteins, mm -hmm. your carbs, and your fats. Well, that vertical is protein. You know, well, carbs, yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's actually not bad. I don't understand rice. Like it's all about micronutrients yet. White rice is the main carb source, right? Which I kind of understand, but no, yeah. you know, so it, and that's, and the article we have on tiger fitness about it is the same thing. I, you know, the thing is I like it. I don't mind it. I think it's actually one of the more balanced ones. What I love about the vertical diet, and I'll tell you this is that it's not keto. Like everybody's that's fucking right. more yeah. on carbs. Everybody's yeah. about just this dumb nonsensical bullshit yeah. about how carbs are going to kill you. Look, here's the deal. It's your first energy source. Yeah, Glucose is your body's preferred source yeah. of energy. And the only reason it goes to keto is because your body's like, fuck man, I have no glucose and I have no protein to derive glucose from either. I mean, right. the, the war on carbs, you know, it, it, it like we swung way over as a, as a society. We're like, eating all kinds of sugar and all kinds of flour and all kinds of processed food and all kinds of canned food, canned food and box food and fast food. And, and people are like, all of a sudden they think they got us. <clears throat> we're taking that away and we're, we're, we're eating no carbs at all. The problem isn't necessarily the carbs. The problem is the food choices. And the amount food. of carbs because each body right. type responds differently to a certain amount of carbs. Person, Endomorphs, yeah. ectomorphs, mesomorphs, they all respond differently. So it's finding that sweet spot. You don't need to cut them completely out. No, I think the Amish have it. The Amish have the lowest obesity rate in the fucking country. <laughs> the Amish, why? They, okay, here's what they eat. They eat bread, butter, yeah. potatoes, Good steak, home cooking. Hey, fucking yeah. pot roast. I yeah. got, they built, I had three additions on my home and they built two of them. And those sons of guns, they would like drink cases of Mountain Dew, legit Mountain Dew with the <laughs> sugar. They would. I know that doesn't fit in, fit in your uh, Amish, Amish dynamic. Yeah, yeah. But, the Amish, yeah. the Amish Mountain Dew. Um, all right, so I, I think that answers it. And also, just another joke: soma types, somatotypes. Somatotypes. As somebody was making a V shred. Um, shout to Alan Roberts, by the way, for yes. um, for his video on the soma types. Every damn day. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the guy on the far right, I'd like to introduce you to him. It is. Um, 
Brandon, how do you pronounce your last name? Kirchner? Kirchner. Yep. Kirch. Kirchner. Kirch. I never say his last Kirch. name. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's always Kirsch or something different than Kirch. So, so he's actually in charge of um, our affiliates. He, Well, not in charge of them. He works with them. A lot of what he does on the marketing side of Tiger Fitness and MTS Nutrition. So you're going to be seeing him a lot on this channel. So learn to love him or, of course, hate him hate, like yeah. a lot learn of you do. Him, yeah, right. Just have a strong opinion either way. Right, right. We just like interaction. So so that's that. I think we answered the question. Now, we can elaborate on that further, but I think we should move this in. Yeah, let's get some questions. And get some questions. So oh, we're going to go all the way to the top. Oh, all the way. That's Holy a shit. scrolly wally. Okay, so it's, oh, this guy turned 48. Chad's old. I don't know Chad Breedlove was that old. Good grief, I'm 50. Damn, man. That makes 50? Me, you, yeah. Did, oh, here's one. We're going to go on. We're going to answer. Yo, did you see Blahino trying to trap bar deadlift? Trying is a very strong phrase. Man. Yeah, yeah. No, we, uh, there, the screenshot of that is floating around the internet. And it's amazing. And I say floating I because it looks this. like a marshmallow. Oh, man. his, his, um, his boobies are quite attractive. Wow. <laughs> like, seriously, usually you need implants for those kind of, like, natural breasts like that don't come along. Fake oh, Merck real fat. This. Fake Merck real fat. <laughs> What's up from Rhode Island? Looking great, fellas. New incoming Chippendale. Yes. Chippendale. <laughs> Yeah. That's us, all of us. We're the thunder from down under. Mm -hmm. Thunder from the Midwest. I yeah, don't even know if something. that works. Something. We'll try. I am here because I saw the word diet. Diet draws, man. People always want to look for that magic bullet. The mm -hmm. problem with us is we don't have a magic bullet. We're more of a, you know, lifestyle type people. So yeah, when I pick out veggies, I just pick out like I try to go <laughs> for all different colors. I'm like a man of the rainbow. Rainbow, really? Yeah, man. I'm man I'm like something new. Yeah, I am. Oh, here's Willie. Good contest prep question. Good Brendan's here because I forgot all that shit. Hey, guys, I have a competition on Saturday at 12. I carb loaded today and look amazing. It's Thursday. Full glute striation, the vascularity even on my glutes. How do I keep this peak condition up through Saturday? Oh, That's, that's a tough uh, one. I mean, Why did you carb up on Thursday? Yeah, that's, uh, that's my first question. Uh, I feel like you carved up a little early. Um, you might have to cut water. I hate it cutting just, water. He just he put himself in a predicament. I know that's what though. I'm saying. It's it's. Oh man, we're gonna fuck up his life, but yeah. this will help people in the process. Yeah, I, I I think it depends on the person, but typically I think a carb up should be a day out from the show. He, I'm always I'm the last. I'm a Friday backloader. That's, yeah, that's um, what I am. Here's that's what I like to do. <laughs> we're getting personal now. <laughs> just, just, just dumpster diving, bro. Oh god. Um, so. Here's my opinion on carb loading. Now, when you deplete carbs, you're able to super compensate at 150%, which means you go 50% over what your muscles can normally carry glycogen. And the goal is to time that where you deplete either Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, or for some very high metabolic people who are already depleted, just Thursday. So you go down to literally zero carbs or close to on Thursday where you're depleted. Yeah. You don't have to be 100% depleted. Friday morning, I start out with a depletion workout and after refilling the liver glycogen a little with raisins or Gatorade, and then boom, you pound in, and then you just maintain that throughout Saturday. Yeah. And I think Jason and you guys are the same way. Yeah. We, we, we're cut from the same cloth because we're able, to, we, we can do this thing called read. And, and we well, also have experience. And what I did too, I don't know if you've done it before, but I actually increased my salt when, I'm, when I am cut. Absolutely. Um, and I Absolutely. see a lot of people cut that, and I think that screws them, they go completely flat, especially when water is coming need down. You need salt. Yeah. And that's why that's I a nutrient usually, driver. That's, that's why I usually, and you take nutrient driver. Exactly. Thank you. Good, good product plug. See, so so yeah. we weren't going to do it, but he did it first. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think with, with sodium, a lot of people don't understand. Like that's why I have people usually sip on Gatorade. Yeah. Um, because yep. you want the electrolytes through your system yep. and Gatorade provides fructose and glucose, which will fill your liver that, as well as cocoa is a good one mm -hmm. too. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and that was, again, like I haven't competed. I competed before 2015 was the last show. So Vita Coco was just on the yeah, scene. That's true. So yeah, it's a lot maybe I'm, maybe I'm outdated, yeah. but nonetheless, and then candy bar, which is full of sodium. I have that while pumping up, yep. which is full of sodium, fat and carbs, which is what you need. Um, but generally speaking, you carved up Thursday. My advice to you would be to whatever you carved up on, if you look great, I would cut carbs by probably half. Yeah, yeah. And I would keep protein minimal, even 0.5 grams per pound, keep fat and carbs high, er. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, a meal, depending on what your calories are, but for me, if I did that, my meals would be three ounces of meat, this would be six times a day, three ounces of meat, probably about eight to 16 grams of car, eight to 16 ounces of sweet potato, and probably about one to two tablespoons of almond butter or peanut butter. Mm -hmm. um, not the unsalted one, but the salted one. And then I probably, 
I probably salt my meals as I normally do. I wouldn't change anything. And then going into Saturday, I would just keep my carbs and fat in there. I'd have some pancakes pre pre judging, yeah. but you're looking at holding a peak for a long time. And that's why you're literally going two and a half days. That's what I was going to say is I have seen people do it on Thursdays and Fridays, yes. but they kind of split it up. So let's yes. say they did a thousand gram carb up, you know, one day they do 500 the next day they do 500 as well but to just shoot all that at once yeah. two days before i i it's gonna be hard to hold. two days is a long time for yeah. your body to hold on to that yeah. and not spill especially when you're depleted too but i agree with brennan and i i am normally the anti-cut water guy i'm normally I, I the only thing i do is i switch to sips on friday night yeah. Yep. I think Jason does the same thing. About you probably like do the same thing. Kinda, eight, yeah. and eight o'clock. Yeah. 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 Big difference. Uh, yeah. Usually you'll see the prep, like Jason, myself, and, and Jason and I have known each other for years. We, we we're, work from similar cloths yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as that's concerned. But generally speaking, we don't want to be thirsty. But since you have all those carbs in you, um, if you do drink excess water, it will cause you to spill, most likely. I'd rather see... You're gonna be a little bit thirsty, but switch to sips, I think probably the full day Friday. Do you think it'd probably add more salt than he's and got I would I would right keep the now. sodium up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't fucking dump the whole shaker. Well but. what I what I do, and you could try this, is it like like I said, when I do carb load on a Friday, each meal is getting half a teaspoon of sea salt. Some people, if you're more sensitive to it, you could do a fourth, you know, something like that. But I would say Keep the salt in there if you start it that early. Keep it where it's at. Yeah. 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 And I also recommend drinking the morning of your contest because it makes me vascular. And drinking even, alcohol? Yeah, and even if you lose, <laughs> you don't care. Yeah. You get some wine. <laughs> that's my yeah. bodybuilding yeah. tip. Okay. And you know, you'll also be able to sleep with uh, less attractive women. So it's a win-win <laughs> situation. That's my vascularity tip. <laughs> okay, so um, what is Steve sipping on? Uh, BCAA's machine fuel watermelon. Another plug, and we didn't mean to. That, we're just answering questions. Hey, yeah. You drink water all day long, you're like, I, I want something with a little bit of flavor. And 100%. That's what I do. Okay, so here's from Chad. One thing to remember, your body can't tell if a carb or protein comes from a chicken breast or a Big Mac, but obviously the chicken breast is better for you. Again, like you're looking at micronutrients and also additives and other things, like a Big Mac is gonna have a very high fat content, yep. whereas if that fits your macros, yeah, that's fine. Um, but I would take um, even grain-fed beef, that's oh, yeah. actual beef over, and when, and here's the thing, like, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on what because Wendy's is actually hundred percent meat. Yeah. If you wanna get a fast food burger, yeah, you go, go to, to Wendy's. Wendy's. Five guys. We go to Wendy's five and we guys. get the we get the, the one or the special. burger, yes. the salads. Wendy's uh, a good place. And Wendy's is not bad. It isn't. Okay, so your thoughts. Drinking BCA all day during a cut, great job, guys. Big fan and support of you and your products. I drink BCAs all day yeah. anyway because I get tired of just drinking plain water. And sometimes I, I toss in a little pre-workout, make my own energy drink. I don't really cut them even in contest prep. Never. Except oh, I do. I start cutting out like artificial stuff maybe a Wednesday before the show. So that's three days before. Other than that, though, I drink them the entire way through prep. Everything is artificial in my life. Yeah, I mean, it really tits. is. Yeah. Hey, um, man, when I'm on a cut, when I'm trying to cut fat, I mean, I, I try to raise my protein levels. And I know, yeah. you know, people say, well, the minimum, the minimum, the minimum. I don't push to the minimum. I, I want to try to, you know, maximize every ounce of muscle I can. So I'll increase protein. Yeah. Yeah. I'll even increase BCAs he, just because. Here's the thing. I drink, I usually have the bigger shaker, but it's dirty. Um, I usually drink probably about 10 to 15 of these a day. In each of these, I have two scoops of BCAA. That's what I call a consistent variable. If I need to lose fat, I'm going to drop calories from elsewhere. I'm going to drop from yeah. fat or carbs. I'm going to probably keep my protein around gram per pound. Yeah. My BCA is consistent. So even though BCA does contain, even though we can't put it on the label because FDA says it does not, don't ask me why. We're that's, just trying not strange. to go to jail. Yeah, that's um, Dude, I don't need the FDA coming in and busting yeah. my labels. So, so here's the deal. My BCA is always going to be at around 20 scoops a day. And you keep that it's consistent? There. It's consistent okay. whether I'm dieting, yeah. bulking, maintaining, prep, whatever. I've been doing this since 2004. Yeah. And I haven't changed it since. And it just is what it is. So if it's a constant variable, I see no problem with it. But if you add it in, remember, it is adding some substrate. Yeah. Um, I've gone from 150 to 115. I want to get to 110. What's the name? Maggie Rose is a chick. Well, that's an arbitrary. I mean, what? I guess when it comes to weight loss, 
Is there a reason why you need to lose five more pounds? Is there a reason or is it just an arbitrary goal? There's nothing wrong right. with having goals, I'm, but... I'm okay with where's the mirror? Where's the mirror? I mean, you got to ask yourself, where's the mirror? And Steve's and... asking you to send nudes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really rough, bro. <laughs> He's off the market. Is Fiona watching? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know there's going to be a replay. Um, how many calories does MTSBCA have technically? It depends. There's different measurements. Australia measures one way. Some say it's two grams per pound. Some say it's just like a protein fork. I'm sorry, four calories per gram. Some say it's two calories per gram. I say, I say err on this. If you want to really be crazy, um, 10 grams would have 40 calories. But if you want to go by different measurements of energy, it's like 2.2, 20. I mean, you're looking at either way, 20 or 40 calories for two scoops. Yeah. If that fucks up your diet, there's something either really right or really wrong with you. That's what I've always said. Yeah. It's like with stuff like that or even zero calorie sweeteners and stuff like that. If that's what's hindering your fat loss or that's what you think <laughs> is, then it's not. It's not. They, they, you're, something else is wrong and you're missing the mark. Regardless of what other YouTubers say, BCA might be hindering your fat yeah, loss. Yeah, that's I unbelievable. Think. They could be partially retarded. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Opinion, of course. In yeah. our, what is that? Like, you really think that's gonna? You think YouTube cares? If you say that? <laughs> this I is just you, our opinion. I think you just do it to um to fucking troll. Thoughts on the vertical diet, Alvin? When this is over, just go back and we've done videos on it. We have an article on it. Actually. Article, wonderful article on the vertical diet. Google, Google, go to that Google that thing that website and go Google vertical diet. How many times do you work out a day? I'll answer all, that. all, all the <laughs> Mark, how many times do you work out per day? Um, on boxing days, twice. Um, sometimes I'll do low intensity at night, so that means I'll box at 8 a.m., um, which is harder than any weight training, and I'll probably go to the gym at around 6 while my kids are at soccer practice. Yeah. Um, normally, I, I, the only reason I go to the gym lately is because my kids are at soccer anyway. I'm killing time. Or else, after boxing, I'm done for the day. What about you? You're pre you do cardio. Separate, yeah, so right? right now I'm doing cardio fasted, low intensity, and then I – also train and then some days because my hits not super high right now I have to do that post workout so I guess if you want to consider that three times I don't really consider that three times so uh, cardio I mean if you're doing like low intensity cardio I consider that actually anti training I consider that recovery yeah, yeah for I mean, me it helps it, me recover it clears my yeah. mind I get emails done yeah. I, last night I spent 20 minutes talking to my wife instead of sitting in bed I do went you do, do you do it faster or do you just I don't care as long yeah, as calories as are burned. Calories okay. are burned. Um, it, yeah. It's you know it's it's it, for me it's a matter of just getting it done. I never right. and the data supports that there's it, no real yeah, difference. No, yeah, and the I reason, get that. The reason I do anything fasted is because I just don't want to do. I, I just don't want to eat before. I just want to get it done. Yeah. Um, but even training like I did legs this morning upon waking, I had a scoop of MTS whey and a banana. Mm -hmm. So okay. You know it is what it is. I'm not a big fasted training time. I don't like being hungry. Yeah. I, I can't train fasted. I can do cardio fasted. Yes, yeah, same. But yeah. not super high intensity is really... I'll do hill sprints with it. Okay. What about the juice? Don't forget the juice. You're right, man. I, I think a vertical diet does recommend orange juice, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. juice. I like orange juice. Due to my work schedule, I can only work out three times a week. Chest and triceps, back and biceps, legs and abs, 30 minutes each, 30 sets each muscle. Do you think that's enough to build mass? Yeah, but you might uh, look when when you have limited time. I recommend people do like block sets or rest pause work. Go in, get your big boom booms out of the way, get your like your compound movements, mm -hmm. and then do some block training. Maximize that stuff. You can still progress. If you don't know what block training is, like you can do as many reps of machine chest press as you can do in two minutes. Just maximize that time. Yeah, that is a good idea. Um, I think three days is fine. Your split's probably fine. As long as you keep progressive overloading week to week, I don't see a problem. Also, if you're doing three days, if you if you enjoy it, the data, I would look at doing full body three days a week. Yeah. Just or hitting upper, that RPE. Lower, alternate between upper, lower, upper, lower, yeah. upper, lower. Yeah. Um, hey, Mark, did you know one of the top YouTubers, PewDiePie, had a clip of you on your intro? Yes, I did. I was very excited about that. We shared it on the company Slack, and I think I've made it. I bought a Bugatti the next day. You know what? PewDiePie is my son. Are you guys dating each other? No, this is simply just strictly sex. Yeah. No commitment. No, I don't need commitment. <clears throat> Thoughts on endurance training on a paleo S diet? Well, paleo is just food choice. Just food. Yeah. You're eating carbs. You're eating fat. You're eating protein. I mean, you can run. Like, can you guys eat potatoes? I know you can eat fruit. Like, you can eat 400 bananas a day and be paleo. The first uh, two years after I came down with really bad type 2 diabetes, I, I just cut out carbs. Just as con Not all carbs, but I didn't go keto. I just dropped out flour and sugar and just stuck pretty much to vegetables because I was trying to improve my health. 
And, you know, I could do whatever, train, lift. I'm, I got pretty darn strong doing it and uh, doing a lot of hiking, so you're fine. So one last question. We're at our 30-minute mark, and we are going to keep to our itinerary, our schedule, because that's what Andy told us to do, and we don't want to piss Andy off. <laughs> Andy's our marketing director, and from now on, PewDiePie called you a soy boy. Yep, yeah. <clears throat> still bigger and stronger than him. He doesn't doing. even live. <laughs> um, no, he, I, I, I love him. I think he's fucking hilarious. I don't even know who he is. I don't even watch. I just know he has a big channel. Okay, um, let's stop with it. Let's start. Let's end it with keto. What are your thoughts on bulking on a keto diet, which I've done videos on, to prevent insulin crashes? Brandon, you go. <laughs> I, <laughs> he needs toast. I'm gonna hold my breath till people stop talking about keto. I, I just I don't think it's conducive. Um. Why? I, I, the question yeah. is the question is why. Okay, but there's nothing wrong with you being conscious of your insulin sensitivity, but you can also measure that and track that. So I I think I think I might I think I might be off, or you guys might we might be misinterpreting, but I think he's he's asking basically when he bulks, he probably eats carbs and it makes him tired. So he's looking at not being tired throughout the day. That could be. And my answer yeah. is. And if you if you were to go and eat, for example, that food challenge I did, which was all bacon and meat wrapped together, you'd still be tired. Insulin isn't just caused by carbohydrate. Total load of food mm -hmm. influences insulin. So if you're bulking hypercalorically, which means more calories taken in right. um, than you burn or more calories than you used to, your body will naturally have an intrinsic insulin response. Mm -hmm. So, my opinion is you might still get, have you ever heard of the meat sweats or people falling asleep after going to the, um, to the, uh, the Brazilian barbecue place from eating too much meat? Mm -hmm. You can have an uh, effect of being tired from too much meat. One is if you don't eat enough fat, it will be gluconeogenesis, which is your body converting protein to glucose, mm -hmm. causing an intrinsic, be it acute, not a biphasic insulin spike, but you will have those issues. My opinion is if you're bulking, set your protein, set your fat, increase the carbs, and if you have issues with being tired after the carbohydrate meal, choose different carbohydrate. Yeah. Instead of white rice, choose a, a sweet potato. Instead of maybe sweet potato makes you tired, maybe choose oatmeal. You know what I, I used to do too? I, I think that's the biggest thing is the food, food choices. Yeah, there's, your, there's your, your bro shit again. Yeah, I, I on, yeah, it is kind of bro shit, but I think that is a huge, Bro shit works. Yeah, I think it's a huge issue because that's the problem is people think of dieting, they're like, I have to eat X, Y, Z. Well, if you don't respond well to X, Y, Z, don't eat it. If some people have food allergies you would never be able to measure. Yeah. Like you could have a slight food allergy that just fucks you up. Yep. Certain foods I can't eat, certain foods I can eat that don't affect me. Right. Um, so for me, I actually operate better when I'm training on carbohydrate. Yeah. Some people love fat, but I like people, I did this, it changed my life. Great. It doesn't mean it'll change Billy's life over there. It doesn't mean it'll change Jane's life over there. Yep. It means it changed your life. And that's great. And maybe people can learn from that. But to say that one size fits all square peg round whole shit it's just complete bullshit. Yeah. Yep. Steve, keto, it's your, your note. Uh, I was just going to say, look, you know, sometimes when I, this is just uh, from a power lifter standpoint, but when I was struggling to stay awake, eating too many carbs or whatever, I didn't get all scientific like these guys. I didn't even think about swapping around my choices. I just would restrict carbs a little bit before training. And then after five o'clock, I'd eat whatever I well, wanted. Well, that's what I was going to bring up. Do you think exactly. it'd be better possibly you know not to have a crap ton of carbs during the day even though you're bulking time it more around your workouts or vice versa wherever you feel like it affects I, you i find i sleep better when i when i when i eat a big meal with just meat and fats i don't tend to sleep as well as if i had carbs in the equation serotonin serotonin insulin all those things play a role yeah. which is why when if you notice in my diet book steve i have carbs preferential time is before bed and it isn't because of any magical glycogen replenishment, it's because sleep is such a critical component. And by increasing those hormones, that carbohydrate will help increase, it'll put you in a more conducive state for good sleep. That's a lot of information for you guys a lot of big to words too. Anyway guys, thanks so much guys. Brennan, Steve, Brennan will be on this channel a lot more, Steve as well. Appreciate you guys watching every Tuesday and Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If there is a deviation from the plan, we will post it either on our Instagram or we'll post it in the um, community tab on your YouTube channel. All right guys, thanks for watching. Thank you. That's not a game. That's not a game.